Hello guys, I'm Grandmaster Grigor Grigorov and today I'm going to uh, present uh, the last important uh, theoretical concept that you should know about uh, the positions with an isolated pole. We will discuss the so-called uh, transition into a symmetrical pole structure. Uh, for example, uh, you can take a look uh, at the position on the board. This position uh, arose in the game uh, Karoli Honfi against uh, Josef Dorfman, two very famous players. It's white to move and uh, white uh, should decide how to proceed. Since uh, the dark squared bishops have been already exchanged, uh, it's hard uh, to build an attack. Uh, now, uh, the black king uh, is uh, relatively safe. Additionally, uh, black uh, has uh, the idea of uh, further simplifying the positions, the position by means of bishop c6 followed by knight f6. That's why uh, white uh, should find something concrete uh, in order to maintain the initiative. Uh, here uh, you can see that uh, we have the opportunity of exchanging the knight by means of bishop d5 and uh, after possible exchanges uh, for sure we will get uh, a symmetrical pawn structure since uh, black will be forced uh, to finally recapture with the e pawn. And now uh, white uh, should decide uh, whether uh, this transition is uh, favorable for him or not. In this lecture um, I want to, to illustrate uh, all the important must-know factors that you should have in mind uh, in order to uh, make better decision regarding uh, the transition to symmetrical pawn structure. So, uh, of course, um, all these factors uh, are relative because uh, in chess uh, it's very difficult to provide 100% uh, valid rules but uh, when uh, you, you're uh, thinking you can use them as a reference point. In general uh, there are three uh, main uh, factors that I'm looking for when uh, deciding whether to go for a symmetrical pawn structure or not. First of all uh, what matters most is the activity of the pieces. Generally speaking, uh, when you have uh, more active pieces, uh, you should uh, go for a symmetrical position. In, in symmetrical positions, the activity of the pieces uh, is the most important factor. Another uh, factor that is related to the first one is the development. In general, when you are better developed, uh, symmetrical structure uh, will favor you because uh, in such positions uh, you will generate peace activity which will provide a very big advantage. And uh, at, at the last place, uh, but uh, not by significance, uh, is uh, Another very important thing that you should always consider when uh, there are weaknesses around the king of your opponent, uh, generally speaking, the transition into symmetrical pawn structure is favorable for you. Why? Uh, I will try to provide a logical explanation. Uh, when uh, we try to build a king side attack, uh, of course, uh, we need to secure the stability in the center. That's why um, if uh, in such kind of positions with an isolated pawn, we want to attack the king and uh, their weaknesses, uh, king side weaknesses in the camp of our opponent, uh, before starting an attack, it's a wise decision to opt for a symmetrical pawn structure because in this way the situation in the center will be stable and uh, there will be no counterplay for our opponent. Uh, okay, uh, these are uh, the must know rules of thumb that you should know uh, when you are making such a decision. Let's uh, go back to the example and uh, try to evaluate the position. Of course, uh, white should decide whether to play bishop takes d5 or not. First of all, uh, let us look at the activity of the pieces. White, uh, white's pieces are slightly more active. Uh, his rook is already on e1, ready to uh, occup occupy the 
open e file uh, after bishop takes d5. Additionally, uh, the f3 knight has an easy access to the e5 square. White's queen is more active uh, than uh, the black one. That's why uh, we can say that uh, white's pieces are slightly more active. Uh, concerning the development, we have the same picture. Uh, white is slightly better developed. His queen is on d3, the rook is on e1. Uh, that's why uh, we enjoy white lead in development as well. But uh, here, uh, the third factor that I have mentioned is very important. Uh, you can easily notice the weak dark squares around the black king. That's why uh, in positions uh, with a symmetrical pawn structure, these kingside weaknesses will provide us with, with an excellent uh, attacking uh, chances on the king side. And uh, since the structure in the center will be symmetrical, black will not have um, enough counterplay. Having uh, all these uh, considerations in mind, uh, the white player, Karoli Konfi, immediately played bishop takes d5, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, e takes d5, and now uh, we have the symmetrical pawn structure. Uh, of course, um, white's long-term objective will be to build a kingside attack. How uh, one should uh, build his kingside attack in such positions? Uh, there are many ways uh, to do so, but uh, I will mm, try to provide uh, the most logical steps that you need to follow in such cases. First of all, uh, it will be very useful to put your knight on e5 and uh, double the rooks along the e-file. After uh, ac accomplishing uh, these tasks, uh, it will be very useful to bring the queen towards the king side. But uh, is this enough? Uh, can we mate our opponent uh, only by attacking with pieces? I think that uh, the answer uh, is not. Uh, we should include our pawns in, into the attack. Because uh, even though uh, the black king side uh, is slightly weakened, uh, so far uh, these three pawns uh, are guarding the king uh, sufficiently well. And uh, which uh, pawn contact or pawn break, if you want, um, will allow us to uh, break the shelter uh, around the black king. The most uh, effective attacking tool in such structures is the advance h4, h5. Uh, and after that, after playing h4, h5, depending on the concrete circumstances, uh, one can decide whether to go for h takes g6 or h6, which can also be annoying uh, in uh, many cases. So after uh, these uh, general considerations, uh, we can see how the game went. White played queen b3. Uh, this is a clever move, of course, not an obvious one, but uh, quite clever. By attacking uh, simultaneously uh, these two pawns uh, on b7 and d5, uh, white is trying to induce the move bishop c6. You can easily see that uh, the bishop is very passive on c6. Now uh, white uh, starts executing his usual plan, rook e3. What is the idea? Of course, um, he wants to double the rooks on the e-file. Queen d6, natural move, connecting the rooks. Rook e1, and in this position, a uh, black plate a5, uh, which is, in my opinion, quite a dubious decision uh, because um, black uh, is uh, weakening the b6 square uh, that in some cases can be occupied by the queen. More flexible uh, would have been b6, and uh, only then uh, rook a to e8, uh, just trying to exchange all the rooks. At this point, I want uh, to make an important clarification. Uh, even if uh, black manages to exchange all the rooks, which is desirable uh, in general, um, white will be still slightly better, because uh, queen and knight are working very well, and this 
tandem uh, is even much more powerful when there are certain weaknesses uh, in the camp of our opponent. For example, in this concrete structure, even without rooks, uh, black will have a hard time to neutralize our play on, dark on the dark squares. That's why, uh, even though the move b6 uh, was more precise, it does not manage to uh, completely equalize. So, uh, white played, black played a5, uh, knight e5, a4, queen d1, and now instead of the normal rook fe8, the uh, black uh, plays bishop d7, just trying to relocate the bishop. Uh, even though uh, this decision is logical, I think that uh, such maneuvers are uh, rather time-consuming. And uh, as uh, we have already mentioned uh, in symmetrical positions, time and peace activity are really very, very important factors. So now you can pause the video and uh, decide uh, how to proceed with the attack. White has a very typical move that uh, he has to make in such structures. Okay, I hope uh, that uh, you have considered uh, different options and uh, you, you found the correct one. Uh, in the game, Honfi played the correct move, h4. As we have uh, mentioned, uh, this pawn um, is very important for the purposes of our attack. Because uh, after h5, uh, in many cases, white can easily uh, destroy uh, black's... Uh, the shelter of the black king. Uh, we will see in many lines how uh, useful is this advance h4, h5. So bishop f5 was played, h5, queen b6, uh, probably not the best move um, because this move uh, does not contribute to the development. And uh, in general, uh, even though uh, black attacks uh, these two pawns on d4 and b2, white wants to put, put his queen on d2. Why? Because from d2, the queen can uh, easily uh, go to the king side. For example, a very typical attacking idea is g4 followed by rook h3. Uh, since uh, the situation in the center is stable, we are not afraid of advancing the king side pawns. That's why uh, the transition into a symmetrical pawn structure was a very wise decision. Here, um, it's already not so easy uh, to play with black. Probably a move like rook c8, uh, threatening rook c2, would have been the best option. But uh, black uh, wanted to immediately get rid of the unpleasant uh, e5 knight and played f6, which is uh, creating terrible weaknesses around the king. Here uh, we reach the second critical moment uh, in the game. Uh, once again, I uh, advise you to stop the video, uh, think on your own, and then compare uh, your calculations with uh, my analysis. I don't think that uh, Honfi uh, played uh, the most optimal uh, continuation here. Uh, he played knight d7. Very interesting move, but um, probably not sufficient. Uh, he, uh, in general, Honfi uh, executed the right idea uh, in the wrong way, I would say. Okay, relatively wrong, because uh, I don't think that this move uh, misses the entire advantage. So first of all, uh, we, we will see how the game went and then we will try to improve uh, white's play. Bishop takes d7, rook e7, rook f7, uh, white takes and plays queen h6. Here uh, was the decisive mistake. Black uh, played rook g8 and the white is winning pretty much on the spot take and h takes g6. Uh, you see now uh, how important was the advance h4, h5. Uh, with a pawn being on h2, uh, this um, capture h takes uh, g6 would, would haven't, uh, wouldn't be possible. So king f8, queen h8, and here black resigned because of the following variation. If he closes with the rook, 
g7, then check, rook e7, and uh, white is going to mate. But uh, in this position, instead of rook g8, uh, black uh, has better defense. He could have played rook e8, because now uh, with the bishop on d7, the e8 square is protected. And uh, we we are going to reach the full wing end game by force. So check, queen h8, this is everything forced. And uh, I think that black still has uh, some drawing chances in this queen's end game because uh, black's queen is very active, attacking on B, uh, b2 and d4, and uh, white should still prove his advantage. Now, after seeing this main line, uh, we can say we can get back and uh, compare uh, the move knight d7 with knight g4. Once again, we try to uh, to sacrifice the knight and uh, invade via the e file. But this time, instead of uh, having a bishop on d7, black will have his bishop on g4, which is quite different. You see that in in the same variation, uh, black uh, is not in time to play a move like rook e8 because the d7 uh, the, the, the bishop is not on d7 and the rook is not protected. So uh, white could have uh, found uh, this idea by using the comparison method, very important method uh, that we use when calculating long variations. And here, uh, okay, uh, the game can continue in this way. But uh, I think that uh, white is already winning. Uh, yes, uh, there is a big difference uh, between the two variations that we have just examined. Once again, uh, let me summarize the most important points uh, in this of this lecture. Uh, here, uh, so far, uh, we have been um, discussing how to make the correct decision regarding the change of the pawn structure, whether it's good to go for a symmetrical pawn structure or not. You should have three factors in mind. First of all, it's important uh, to look at the activity of the pieces. Another very important factor uh, is the development. And uh, also, in general, uh, the transition into a symmetrical pawn structure is good for you when there are weaknesses around the king of your opponent. So, uh, guys, uh, this was uh, the last theoretical lecture regarding positions with an isolated pawn. In the next lecture, uh, we're going to practice this pawn structure by using the strategy booster of modern chess. So thank you for your attention and uh, see you in the next lecture.